Hey guys, Wally Renee here. Um, just gonna do a quick little talk on how to just very easily erase a tooth in Mesh Mixer, um, bring that tooth back into Plan Cat Easy, and do something cool with it. So here we have a patient on tooth number nine that has um, idiopathic um, internal resorption of that that tooth it needs to be extracted. And the patient is a diva, does not want anything removable has a very tight occlusion. I can't hang a wing off the lingual of that um, tooth number 10 there because of the occlusion. I would have to reduce that tooth pretty heavily. So here what I'm doing now is I'm in Mesh Mixer. I've loaded my intraoral scans and I'm just selecting, using the select tool, the entire tooth. Okay, so, you know, take your time, go around and, and try to get it as smooth as possible and just focus on eliminating the tooth that you're going to be extracting. So what you'll notice though, no matter how careful you are, you're going to have a very jagged border. You hit B on the keyboard in an attempt to make that jagged border nice and smooth. And if you get this red kind of tooth of death here, it's meaning that there's a, there's a hole in the mesh somewhere it doesn't like, so we have to find that. And I could see it right now, right on that incisal edge, on that distal incisal, you see that tiny right there doesn't like that so we have to just fill that in okay so it, it's somewhere if you're getting a red tooth then you're gonna hit B again um, and of course now my OCD is taking over and I'm seeing little areas that I don't like so so now when you hit B what you see is a blue line splitting the difference between the jagged lines and it's gonna be a very gorgeous border I'm also noting noticing however that there's some areas of that blue line that I don't really like um, for example on the distal and proximal there on the lingual embrasure space I'm getting a little bit of that blue line over onto my adjacent tooth which could potentially cause some issues with the delete and where when we delete the tooth you might actually take some of that lateral incisor 10 with it which would be bad because we're just wanting to delete virtually extract this tooth number nine so here we go we're a lot better here I think I could do even better in this facial embrasure space here right between 9 and 10. I'm just going to smooth that up, making my selection tool pretty small and just getting in that little crevice there. And once again, not perfect, but I'm going to hit um, B, as in boy, on the keyboard and watch that line just get gorgeously smooth. And there it is, except now you have this like perfect border. So now we need to erase and fill. There's a couple little things that you could do here. Um, when you erase. First is you could pick flat. I like flat minimal um, a lot of times when I'm going to do this. Um, usually it's pretty good and then you could go back with um, bubble smooth or inflate but you could go flat remeshed and sometimes if you're lucky and you refine that remesh you could get it to where everything lines up where it's kind of a perfect extraction socket. So here once again I went flat remeshed and I just hit the refine button and rotated that mesh around until it was pretty much perfect there. And now you'll notice um, I left a little bit of extra material on the interproximals of tooth number 8 and 10. So I'm going to use some tools to smooth it. In this instance, I'm using Bubble Smooth. And Bubble Smooth under your brushes, put the strength down and hold Control. And when you hold Control, it's going to melt away a little bit of material. Okay, so you could kind of smooth those borders. I'm just going to speed this up so you don't have to be bored. <clears throat> and if you don't hold control down, it in bubble smooth will actually inflate. There is an inflate tool, but that's kind of very aggressive. Um, but bubble smooth will kind of puff up the tissue just a little bit. And so just alter between bubble smooth and inflate and um, robust smooth to get what you want. And here we're going to do a little bit of grafting, some bone grafting and some tissue work here when we extract this tooth. So we're hoping that tissue kind of comes down a little bit on the day of surgery. So I'm trying to mimic that a little bit by adding a little bit of material. So now we export all those as binary STL files. And what's cool is Remexis, as you know, is completely open. So we're just gonna re-import those scans right back in to the patient case. And we're going to now go ahead and mark our margin and what we're going to design is an adhesion bridge here with a facial veneer on site 10 um, just for a temporary and so while that patient's healing with their graft 
and they could have a tooth there. Obvious, this patient obviously understands that's going to be extremely fragile and not to even put pepper on their food because if they sneeze, it could, could come off. But So here we are now in the plan tab, and we've already marked our margins, and we're just moving these, these kind of uh, perfectly contoured teeth in, in using the three tools, move, rotate, and resize to kind of fit them in the space better. And you know, they don't have to be perfect and they won't be. It's kind of a rough estimate. And now we're going to the design tab, turn autogenesis off, completely off, and just go ahead and see what you get. Stump, something like this is so easy, so easy to fix with the tools that you have. Um, Right now I'm just using rubber tooth and I'm going to go ahead and design this one. It's going to be long, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and rubber tooth that out a little bit. And what's what's cool, if you hit um, control alt at the same time, you could turn this Medusa view, which is like a stone color view. Smooth tool from the lingual on all the way strong. We're just going to melt those incisal edges down. I like to do it from the lingual like this getting that proper length and we're pretty much done here guys um, just a little fine little fine tuning some eccentricities that we have to worry about proximal contacts occlusion and then of course the path of kind of mill path the dual path kind of thing that you might have hear people float around but it's kind of a, a unicorn nobody really knows about it but here I am in slice view I'm just making sure I have no occlusal contact on that ponic and then I'm thickening up using dropper here on default strength because I'm going to be really thin with this veneer. You can mill it out of Emacs, um, resin, whatever you want to mill it out of. Understanding that we're a little long on the incisal edge of 10. Completely reversible though. Now proximal contacts using smooth tool, maximum strength, getting this kind of really beautiful teal green look to it. Dual path of orientation. Now I am going back to the orientation tab, making sure I have tooth number nine selected because that's what I'm going to be milling. And I'm, I'm picked to orientation to where I could see all my margins at the same time, kind of like the path of insertion, if you will. Now I'm in the mill tab, mill simulation, just to make sure everything's going to fly. Doing a quick little <clears throat> sim. We'll go ahead and slice it real quick right over the tooth. Just look at the fit and, and check for any warning signs. Looking pretty good there, um, increasing my cement space for this because it's going to be loosey-goosey. Uh, I, don't, I don't want any binding. Um, so there we go. Now, one thing that you'll notice, if you could see through that tooth, you see that mesial interproximal there? That's blue. That's probably going to be a little bit of a binding spot we know to grind away ahead of time. So anyway, I just I thought it'd be a cool case to show you guys um, just kind of a workflow. Super easy. If you can't do this in Mesh Mixer, um, there's a couple other brilliant people that have done better videos than myself um, that you that you should look up. Just you know, search on YouTube. It, you know how to extract teeth on mesh mixer. I also have a few on there as well. So anyway, I hope this helps um, and also helps understand why it's so important to have an open system where you can import and export things in and out of. Um, it's kind of the the perfect way to do things.